Steelers. Cowboys. Rivalry game, Crowley. It goes all the way back to the 70s. That's right. We talked about it. I mean, I was about seven years old whenever the Steelers played the Cowboys in the Super Bowl in 1996. Kind of made me fall in love with players. Emmett Smith, all those guys. Good game. Except for Neil O'Donnell. Not good for him, yeah. Right. Bad game for him. Bad yeah. game for the guy who called in and said he was in the eighth row and he hates the 90s because of the Cowboys. Correct. But it's a new era. And we get started. Justin Fields, Crowley. Over under 186 and a half passing yards. I'm going over. I think he throws for about 215. You think it's going to be a big game for him passing? I think it's going to be a big game for him overall. Okay. And Diggs might not play. Ball hawk for the Cowboys. I think that's only going to help. If he does play, he's got an ankle injury. I like that. Yeah, I'm going over. So am I. I'm going over. I went over last week. It was around the same number. I think it was exact. Maybe it was 183 or 186. I can't remember, but it was around the exact same number. He's definitely crossing 200 again. I think he picks right up where he left off last week. Over for Justin Fields. Dak Prescott over under. Oh, this is pretty high. 241 and a half. I'm going to I'm going to go under. I, I don't think Rico Dowdle or Ezekiel Elliott is going to scare you running the football. They average 75 yards a game on the ground. They average throwing it 38 times a game, which is tops in the NFL. So the game really comes down to Dak, and they're going to have to get yards somehow. That's how they get yards. You're going to throw for over 250. So you're going over? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go under. 223, I think he gets. 220. So right on the nose, 223. 223. 223. Yes, he's going to be under 241 and a half. Najee Harris over under 65, 64 and a half rushing yards. I know where you're at here. Well, it better be freaking over. Yeah. As bad as the Cowboys are running the ball, they might be worse at stopping the run. No Micah Parsons. No Demarcus Lawrence. It's just not a good defense. And you take the two best players off the defense. They're giving up 105 rushing yards per game on the ground to a running back. I don't feel good about Najee Harris right now. I feel worse about the Dallas Cowboys rush defense. He's going over, Doran. It's going to be the Najee Harris game bank. I think he's going to go under. It's going to be around 59, 60 yards, but it's going to be under that mark. He's still going to get the halfway point of 100 yards, though, uh, for Najee Harris. Now, Rico Dowdo, that's his name, the running back for the Dallas Cowboys. They haven't been able to run the ball. They can't run the ball. He's their starting running back. His over-under is 40 and a half. Could this be the game where they actually do run the ball? That's what I'm worried about. 40 and a half for Dowdle. I don't think so. Steelers running defense didn't exactly bathe itself in glory last week. Jonathan Taylor's a different animal than Rico Dowdle and Ezekiel Elliott. Get this, man. Rico Dowdle. 34 carries so far. 134 yards. 3.9 a pop. 33 and a half yards per game. So Najee Harris's numbers aren't great. Like he's averaging like three and a half, a uh, li- little bit above that yards per carry. But the Steelers just will keep giving it to him. Dallas, when they can't run it, they won't run it. I don't think they'll be able to run it early. Steelers defense needs to respond last week. They're at home. No, these guys ain't running for Jack. They're going to run for less than 60 yards collectively. So under. 45 yards for Dowdle. Oh. I think he crosses it. Justin Fields over under 45 and a half rushing yards. Love it. Love it. Cowboys giving up near 40 yards a game on the ground to quarterbacks. We've gone over this. Deshaun Watson ran on him. Lamar Jackson ran on him. Justin Fields found his legs in the second half against Indianapolis. Over. With you. Read option. It's going to be a big component to the Steelers offense Sunday night. CeeDee Lamb over under 80 and a half receiving yards. I thought Joey Porter Jr. played as bad as he's played in a Steelers uniform. And when asked, Terrell Austin said, JPJ's not going to follow CeeDee Lamb around. I wonder if there's some gamesmanship there. Said they were going to have a conversation with Joey. I'm sure Joey Porter Jr. is going to state his case. I can see CeeDee Lamb lined up in the slot against Beanie Bishop a couple of times. It's a matchup they're going to hunt. He's really their only option, kind of like George Pickens is for the Steelers. I don't, I don't like it, but I think he'll probably go over. Yeah, mm, I'm, I'm close. I think he's slightly under, but he's still going to get his. So I'm going to go under 80 and a half receiving yards for C.D. Lamb. Jake Ferguson, their tight end, he's their other option in the passing game. 46 and a half receiving yards. I think Dak's going over his numbers, so I think Jake Ferguson's going to be part of that. Real quick on Lamb, 79 yards a game. 
and the over-under was 80 and a half. Yep. Oh, you dogs in Vegas. Mm-hmm. I think Jake Ferguson goes over as well. I am with you. I think he's the other option. Uh, he's the only other option. He does go over 46 and a half. George Pickens over under 54 and a half receiving yards. I like the over. If Justin Fields is going over, he throws to one guy. Really? I mean, he spreads it around, but he is going to have one guy with the target share. 11 targets last week for Pickens. Going to be in that ballpark again. I'm going over. I am with you. Over 54 and a half receiving yards. Pat Fryer moved 31 and a half receiving yards. Dallas has been okay at handling the tight ends apart from in the red zone. So I might expect a score from Fryermuth in this game. I think he goes under the number. I think he goes over 35, 36 yards receiving for Fryermuth. Pat Fryermuth over under three and a half receptions. Did you know, Doran, that he is the only tight end in football to have four or more receptions in every game so far? Wow. Great stat. Yep. He does it again. At least four catches. He goes over. I agree. Four catches for Patty Fry. Bad year for tight ends, by the way. I know. Just around the league. It's disappointing. Injuries. Yeah, it makes me sad. Yeah. It makes me Are you going to be okay? Um, yes, because this next guy I think is going to go over as well. Over under one and a half receptions for Darnell Washington. I think they can keep involving him more. And Justin Fields called it the turning point of the game for them offensively. When he's running down the sideline and jumping over dudes, he... He looks different, like no hyperbole here. He looks different than any guy on the planet when he's running full speed. (laughs) It's absurd. No, you want tackle? I'd rather tackle Derrick Henry. I'd rather box James Harrison than try to tackle that guy in the open field. He'll go over the two. Yes, he will. George Pickens over under four and a half. I think we both are in agreement that it'll be over because the target share last week was what, 11? 11 and then only four to other receivers. Yeah, so four and a half receptions for George Pickens. I think that we can get on the same page that he will hit that. Calvin Austin over under one and a half receptions. Oh, he had one last week. He had the big one the week before. I'd like to see Roman Wilson get involved. I'm going to go. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go one again. Yeah, I think he has one, but I think he does carry the ball whatever way. Maybe a jet sweep, maybe end around, something like that. I think he does carry the ball. Jet sweep. Yeah, you love jet sweeps. Will Justin Fields throw a touchdown? Yes. Will he rush for a touchdown? Yes. Will he throw two touchdowns? No. Will he run for two touchdowns? Yes, he will. Again, like last week? Yes. Okay. You, you, You said it, man. The read option. You got Russell Wilson as the backup quarterback now. You don't want Fields to get hurt, but you feel like he could use his legs more if you trust your backup. Yeah, I think this is the read option game for him. Will and it's been a weapon for them in the red zone. Sorry. TJ Watt have a sack. Absolutely, he will. Well, we have two sacks. Yeah, he. you don't keep that guy down, man. And they're going to drop back and throw it a bunch. Dak's been sacked 10 times on the year. I think he's going to get off. His schneid in a big way. I think he has two sacks as well. You just kind of alluded to it. Will Russell Wilson, this is the question that I I wrote up. Will Russell Wilson be the backup quarterback? But let's change it a little bit because I think that we are pretty certain that he will be the backup quarterback. How many times do they pan to him (laughs) on the broadcast of him pacing up and down the sideline saying that he is the backup quarterback and not just the emergency quarterback? It could be a handful of times. Yeah. Anytime Justin Fields misses a throw or does something silly, takes a sack, yeah, they're going to cut on over to Russell Wilson. Sierra, you think she's going to be there? Yes. Yeah. Big game. Brand game. Brand game. She's a brand. Brand game. (laughs) All right, last one for you. Will they show Neil O'Donnell throwing an interception in the Super Bowl on the broadcast? Yeah, and then they're going to show the fake spike from Ben Antonio Brown, and they're going to show some 70s highlights of the Steelers beating the Cowboys in the Super Bowls. They're going to show all of it, including that, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they will. I agree. All right, that's it. Odds and ends. Yep. Pony and Muller do a segment on Fridays called Remember a Guy. I think it's a really good idea. Well, they'll just bring back a random Steeler and talk to him. Going to go out on the limb and say it's not going to be Neil O'Donnell this no. week. I feel like he, like, fell to the face of the earth. I wonder what he's up to these days. I'm going to figure that out. Yeah. 